Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Boz. Welcome to the Dr. Boz channel on Sunday night, joining us live. I have got a great show for you tonight, and um, I hope I have a bunch of newbies out there because I am looking for your help. It's been a long time since I've been new at keto, and I'm going to need some help. So in true uh, fashion, I am going to check some uh, ketone numbers in front of you all while I wait. Oh, thank you very much for whoever just said the sound is good. Uh, Flash Gordon 1023, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I am known for a few technical issues at the beginning. I keep thinking someday I'm going to have uh, a producer and a, <laughs> a tech guy and a sound guy, a gal, and a, um, yeah, that's not happening anytime I can see soon. Uh, in the, a few traditions that I like to do during the show, one of them is to check my numbers. And I haven't done that in a few weeks, uh, not for any great reason, just that I didn't bring my machine a couple of times. And um, so I will put a little drip of blood into my uh, ketone meter and then I will do another little drip into the uh, same meter, but just a lookalike for glucose. And I in do this live. So yeah, ketones uh, only 0.9. I mean, that's not bad. And glucose 88. Here we go. So we will check this at the end of the show. I just like folks to see, here's what stress does to me. Um, I am uh, going to start with just some announcements over the last week. Um, I, I think uh, we've got um, just based, one of my New Year's resolutions for this year has been to keep up with the YouTube comments. Actually, I, I said I just need to funnel in one, one area where all the comments come in. And <laughs> I tried ha having somebody help me set up uh, kind of a way to coordinate all the questions, uh, like from Facebook and from um, Twitter or Instagram and from YouTube and email and yeah. It overwhelmed the guy who was supposed to help me not get overwhelmed. <laughs> so we said, all right, let's just do this in, um, <laughs> um, we're going to just focus on YouTube. Uh, so as I uh, have been really working at looking at those comments, I have noticed how much uh, there is uh, a lot of questions out there from newbies. And as I am really, really working hard to get the last details of my book shored up. Uh, I, I am very humbled by how much I learn from you, how much it, re it reminds me of where I was before. And, and that is a very powerful message for me, um, in especially these weeks where I'm shoring up, is this book going hit, to hit the audience or is it going to not be what people need? Um, so I just need to say thank you for the people that have been putting your comments into YouTube. Uh, and I've been doing a little better job uh, getting them answered. Um, so I just want to recognize a few people there. Thank you for the folks telling me where you're from. I am going to have some audience participation tonight. So uh, it's great to start by letting everybody on the channel uh, say, tell me where they're from. It is another one of those moments where I remain humble of how many people check in and have improved their health by just getting some education. And uh, I like doing it. I like teaching. Um, I have some other kind of fun announcements. I have been looking to move my medical practice out of South Dakota. And uh, this has been something my husband and I have talked about for a while, but um, it starts with getting a medical license. And so I have three states that I am officially licensed in. Uh, that's the state of New York, the state of Florida, and the state of Texas. So as I look for a new medical home, <laughs> I don't know a lot of physicians in those states outside of some keto speakers. <laughs> and I uh, just want to throw the shout out that I am definitely a... Uh, um, I'm just curious about where I'll end up and where our family is going to move to. Uh, I've got one uh, son in college in Hawaii, and that is super exciting. We get in-state tuition when we live in South Dakota, so we'll have to figure that out. Uh, but we also have uh, a junior just about to graduate who over the weekend uh, made it to the nationals for debate in the Lincoln-Douglas debate, which means he really likes to argue and talk <laughs> about um, 
very, I like, I think it's fun, uh, fun things to uh, kind of, this one was on nuclear war and uh, why nuclear weapons are, uh, you know, you walk into LD debates and you don't, you don't get to choose which side you, you debate for. So you'd walk in and say, all right, you flip the coin, you're going to have to defend the nuclear weapons. And then the next time you walk in the room, you have to say uh, why they should be abolished or, you know, removed. Anyway, so uh, just congratulations to my son who is uh, headed to nationals in Lincoln Douglas debate and um, looking to, to just share my news of being licensed in three states as I look for a place to, to move our family. Um, so let's see, I've got a few more announcements. Last week I announced a couple of things. So as I look at this next book, unlike the first book I wrote, uh, which was more of a God thing. My mother was sick and I was writing her little lessons on how to improve her health. Uh, she was ready to throw in the towel, have a funeral, the cancer that had been uh, attacking her white blood cells for over a decade was not listening to our chemotherapy. She wasn't doing well, she wasn't healthy. Uh, and in the moment where she said, I'm not, I don't wanna try any further, I was deep into the stacks of papers on the ketogenic diet and how it heals a brain, which is a lot of what my clinic does. Um, brain repair is what I like to think of. I mean, internal medicine is, is chronic illness, is long-term management of disease processes. That's what we are experts at. But um, my favorite has always been how do you heal a brain, uh, whether it's sleep problems or um, depression or anemia. I just, that's been a place I, I call fun is say, how do you get it to work better? And look at their quality of life when that's improved. But grandma, grandma's brain was not doing well. Her cancer was awful. And after I had been looking at the ketogenic diet, I said, okay, grandma, let me we call her grandma Rose, even though she's my mom, but the kids all call her grandma Rose. I said, um, let me show you what I would do. And miraculously, uh, she listened and we did a, a deep dive into the ketogenic diet. And as I wrote that, those little lessons for her, her brain wasn't working well. So they were very specific, very simple, very um, not to get too distracted with all of the places I wanted to go with the education. I delivered what she could use uh, in uh, the moments where she was suffering. So I didn't think anybody would buy it. I mean, I really wrote the book as a memoir, you know, I, I thought she was going to die. And so I wrote what I taught her and I think it took six months to sell one book. I mean, probably under 50 in six months, but then something happened and the story was inspiring to other people and then they would buy the book and pass it to other people. And it was just, it was really, it was really, it makes me emotional. It was really amazing how many people learned from that story. So fast forward two and a half years as I started to write this next book. Um, once again, I don't think you should teach outside of, um, of storytelling. Uh, when I'm teaching about a process in a patient, I will use, um, uh, you know, I'll use the experiences that I have from other uh, patients over the years and I'll use those stories as a way to inspire uh, that they can get better and not not telling other people's names or private information but just using the human storytelling as a way to say there's some amazing ways your body will heal if you give it the right environment. So I have another story that I'm putting in this book uh, but if you look out now there's hundreds of ketogenic books and so you say well why would why would I want to write another book? Um, and really the answer is, I see a lot of folks out there trying to do what Grandma Rose does, trying to do what we do here in Sioux Falls. And it isn't hard, but I think the guide to helping either folks who are coaching other people use some of the evidence base that I use in my clinic. And also, I just think you don't need to have a physician to help you do great on the ketogenic diet. Uh, it's just food. <laughs> And although there are some medical things that need to be paid attention to, um, I, will, um, I will be the first to say, you do not need an advanced doctorate in medicine to do this. And there's lots of keto coaches out there that are really doing a great job of helping others. So I'm hoping that this book will give them some guidelines of places that I've run into troubles 
Um, and some places that I think could, uh, I see keto coaches or I see keto newbies making some mistakes. So tonight we're gonna go through a few of those mistakes. Uh, um, some of them I made and I've made for a while before I course corrected. Um, but also I, I'm using this as a time where in the comments, I would love to know how long you've been on the ketogenic diet. And if you're under six weeks, or if you can remember life in the first six weeks of the ketogenic diet, I really want to hear from you about what were your struggles. Because I, I to set my mind frame uh, in what does it look like to be new at the ketogenic diet? I have, I've had some polling that I've done recently and I've had some, um, you know, some new patients and that always gives me some good um, perspective. But as I have really focused my energy on writing this book, I, I just, I wanna hear from more people to say, I think that's, uh, I think I'm on the right track. But, so last week I uh, offered something for the first time, which is a new uh, download on, in the comments below in the show notes. Uh, and it's a, a link to something called Toxic Traditions. It's kind of a sneak peek of where I'm going for some of the information in the new book. Um, but there was a survey in there <laughs> and there's this little edit button that says allow anybody to edit the survey and we accidentally clicked the edit button. <laughs> so I think by about the fifth or sixth person <laughs> um, there were edits that weren't supposed to be in there. There were not English words anymore. <laughs> and then so we, we kind of had a mess, but we fixed all that. So uh, if you want to give us some feedback uh, for toxic traditions, I'd love you to click on that and download it and be part of our little uh, information. I don't send out a lot of emails. I do this every week, so tune in. Uh, I, again, I have been really putting a high effort to answering the uh, comments and questions in the YouTube uh, uh, comments. I really want this to be a place where people can come, ask questions, and be educated without being your medical advice, but really just being um, an educated educator, if you would. So I love teaching, I love medicine, and I really can't believe how much the ketogenic diet has been a, just a joy to do in healthcare. Um, I've spoken with several physicians who've over the last decade become a little cynical, much like I was, saying we have a prescription for everything. I don't think any of my patients are getting better. And I was good at this. I really, I put effort into this. I, I have s support groups for free. I do things that really engage the patient. And yet it was, it was almost not working, and um, I mean, it wasn't working actually. Uh, a switch to what we do now and using the, the platform of how I think communities can resurrect health, uh, not needing a physician to lead it, just needing the right information. And so I hope, I hope it goes well. There'll be a workbook that comes with this so that if you are kind of doing it on your own or if you're leading a support group, uh, to have the people in your support group get the workbook and then use at least one person have the book to guide all of you. But in any event, um, that's hopefully in the next couple of months. If you uh, want to be on that newsletter though and on that part of the, um, the communications, uh, click on the Toxic Traditions. It's free and it's just a sneak peek of some of the stuff I'm working on. All right, so let me, I've got notes here, a couple things I wanted to review. I had a lot of you write in asking about my dad. So again, uh, my dad is a wonderful, <laughs> hardworking, Midwestern, part Norwegian, uh, at least I think so. <laughs> We're kind of a Dukes mixture, but uh, South Dakotan who for years had high blood pressure, not terrible high blood pressure, a little bit of blood pressure medicine that we used for years, but it didn't quite keep his blood pressure as controlled as I wanted it. And he's kind of stubborn, so I let him be stubborn, and his blood pressure ran in that 140s to 160s, over 80s to 90s. And then something happened inside his kidney, uh, which has led him to kidney failure. I've done a couple of shows on this, and in recent weeks, he's been back in the hospital. Uh, one little thing goes wrong, and the, the kidney is really powerful. Uh, it is a chronic inflammation that killed his kidney. And I've said many times that had I educated my dad with the ketogenic diet the way I did my mom about a decade ago instead of just a few years ago, 
uh, his kidneys wouldn't have died. He really would have been rescued and his blood pressure would have been better controlled. I'm not sure we could have ever prevented the protein problem that's happened in his kidneys. It's not all due to blood pressure, but it really has, um, you know, it's a really heavy cross to bear to know that had I known about this, I could have helped him. I, he could be not ending up in the hospital nearly every other week. Uh, so, yeah, so thanks for those who have been, you know, seen on the, uh, the posts on the social media that he's in the hospital and praying for him because, wow, it's a tough deal to watch um, that kidney rob, them, rob their life, rob their brain, rob their energy. And anyway, so thanks for that. He is home and um, I'm back to writing, you know, when dad's in the hospital, it's hard to focus on anything else. So I didn't get hardly any writing done, but we'll, we'll resurrect that this week. All right, so I want to, all right, so that's most of the announcements. Uh, I think I've got, uh, I did have in my personal week, we like to do check-ins in our week when I do my support group, and I uh, definitely had uh, one of the tougher weeks for me, which was um, uh, a week filled with uh, temptations and the high stress of dad being in the hospital. Uh, and I, yeah, I had sugar, I had cookies, <laughs> things I do not usually have. Uh, and wow, that definitely, I, I'm really impressed though over the year, uh, the last couple of years, had I had sugar a year ago, I would have not had a normal Dr. Boz ratio for four or five days. And now I, d I can go back onto my keto, I mean, I'm getting healthier. You can even see it in my world. Uh, I mean, my numbers, I mean, that I don't really lose a lot of weight. Uh, I don't wanna, I mean, I could use more, lose more weight, but I don't need to. What I do have a, um, I just, I'm super impressed by is how quickly that metabolism restores. So I find that pretty powerful. All right, so <clears throat> I am going to go to my list. So I'm not using slides tonight, so I'm gonna do this just as me talking to you because I really want this to be a conversation that you guys help me with. Uh, and I can see your comments off to the side but I'll, um, uh, I'll just focus on this and bring the comments back when we close out this, this, little, this little talk. So the, the focus of tonight, uh, I really want to show you some of the mistakes that I think, um, had I known uh, then what I know now, I would have done differently. And in part, this is what pushes me to, you know, tell a story of another patient who's really, uh, had some incredible um, luck in coming to the ketogenic diet. Um, his, uh, his weight loss is one thing, um, and it was a big part of his story, but his brain health, his heart health, uh, and his, his longevity have all been improved in the story that will come out in the book. Uh, but what is interesting is to, to look at the number of things I recommended early in my journey, which really was a crash course for my mom who had weeks to live. I mean, really, her life expectancy was under six months when we started the ketogenic diet because she was not gonna take chemo. Now, she has taken chemo since then, but she is a much healthier version of herself uh, and is currently off chemo with normal white blood cell on a ketogenic diet for over a year. And that is in a cancer uh, CLL, chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia, so kind of think of it as cancer of the white blood cells, uh, where the ketogenic uh, chemistry that's present in her body really has, um, I mean, it ma has made it nearly impossible for that cancer to grow. And I did not think that was possible with her cancer. There is not literature out there to support that. So I call it a miracle, and I'm just thankful to be able to teach other people about this. Um, but when I look back and say, all right, here's some of the top things that I recommend now that I wasn't as great about before. Uh, so I've got a list here. I'm just going to make sure I do uh, follow the list. So um, in recent weeks, we've had some newbies show up to my support group that we do once a week in our community. Uh, and in, in many ways, this book will teach you how to run a support group. How does that work? What are the best practices of not wearing out the leader and also really empowering the people. But we've had new patients or new folks show up to the meeting. It's free and it's open to the public. And when they come and they have read the book, uh, and I'm specifically talking about the one I wrote, but I don't care if it's my book or anybody's book. I like 
storytelling when you teach about something sciencey like a ketogenic diet. So that's why I use the story of my mom. But I don't care if it's that book or any book. They usually have heard about the ketogenic diet. They've heard that it's a good thing. And then by the grace of God, somebody invites them to our support group. But they show up and in that process, uh, they ask questions that are um, that I haven't even thought about since probably the first year I was ketogenic. And I, so my number one first recommendation is if you're gonna do the ketogenic diet and you're new, read, <laughs> read a book. Uh, now, I like any way you can because it really is a story that you do not think you're gonna learn about the ketogenic diet and you accidentally learn about the ketogenic diet. But it, it sounds a little so self-promoting to say, hey, read my book. And that's not what I'm really saying. I'm just saying, educate. I would have had so many more people, uh, you know, even just some of the pamphlets that are out there. Uh, oh, I know, yeah, this is another little thing. So in uh, this little um, um, food guide is what I call it. But there's like four paragraphs in the beginning that just say, here are the basic rules. Here's one, two, three. Uh, even had they read that before starting the ketogenic diet, they would have been better. Like they had really no idea what, what they just heard high fat, they're losing weight, and it reverses diabetes. All true, but um, I, I can't tell you how many more problems they run into because they just have very little education. So um, that that is step one, is reading. Uh, give them a book to read, give them a book to listen to. Um, I, by whatever happened, um, read the ketogenic, uh, read the book any way you can for Audible. And I love it. It's actually my favorite version of the book is how it turned out. But sometimes they're, I mean, I, some of the folks I've met in the last three weeks that are brand new to the ketogenic diet, their brains did not work well enough to really read a book. So it has to be either highly entertaining. Uh, uh, I mean, even a YouTube playlist would have gotten them from zero to what they need to not hurt themselves as they step into the ketogenic way of life. Uh, so number one, I, I have just this minimal education that I didn't recommend anybody do before the ketogenic diet because I didn't think you could have these many problems. But you know, full force into um, you know, thousands of people that have been brought to the ketogenic way of eating. And I can tell you it's wise to have just a little bit of knowledge before you start. So I didn't recommend that at the beginning. I would now. Um, number two um, is the power of fat. So I'm gonna actually, uh, let's see if I can um, do one little thing here. I'm going to go, um, oh yeah, I've got it right, okay. So if I look at, um, this is one of the keto continuums that I am working on for the book and for the workbook. And it just is a basic outline of what happens. Uh, you know, I really don't find it, um, I don't wanna say beneficial, that's not the right word. I don't find it the most value for patients to have a flash in the pan of ketosis. But rather, I want them to enter into a, a ketogenic way of living and stay there for a lifetime. Uh, you know, I'm an internist. I've seen medical problems just wilt their body from the inside out. Um, you know, I'm in a white coat today because I had to see a couple patients and, and they aren't in their own homes anymore. They don't have the privilege of living alone because of what chronic disease did to them. And if you could, if you could feel the empathy, uh, feel the pain of what that life really is like, uh, you would see why I am <laughs> coming here every Sunday saying, please uh, get a little education. The book is a great way to begin, but understand that the long game is what I'm after. Uh, this next book is meant to support communities for free, uh, have your own way of improving this health and to empower those people willing to lead that. But in this, uh, in this uh, continuum is what, what I like to show you. Um, so I'm gonna move this around just a hint. Let's see if I can uh, not screw this up. Okay, so you'll see at the top it says keto continuum, meaning I think there's about 12 steps in here. Um, I like you to notice that the urine ketones there in the yellow stripe, uh, that they, they continue for most of this adventure. Uh, getting to where I'm at, which are these blood numbers, is not where you need to begin. Uh, this is a cheap, easy, effective uh, intervention, if you would, for your health that does not require you poke your finger. 
Uh, but when you look at the three phases in that first column, the top one shows you beginner. And then the next ones there in the light blue are called this baseline metabolism. And let's see if I can <laughs> steer this up where I need to. And the bottom one is uh, the most advanced level is really called a stressing of your metabolism. But what I like people to focus on is in this con keto continuum, the, the top one, that beginner, uh, they really, uh, in phase, in number two, they're eating less than 20 carbs a day and they're eating fat that I've had more than one uh, of my colleagues or friends try to do the ketogenic diet and they are super afraid of fat. And at first I didn't really say, I'm like, well, the, you'll transition, you'll be fine. And I do not tell them that anymore. I say, you have got to eat fat at the beginning of this. Uh, in, in those people at the beginning six week time, your fat production, uh, meaning your fat released from your fat cells, is almost zero uh, if you're in a high insulin state. The only access to fat you have are the ones that you swallow. And that, uh, that little bit of time where when you swallow the fat, as long as the carbohydrates are low, and I mean less than 20 total carbohydrates a day, you have to eat the fat in order tra to transition. That when, I'm, when I talk about transition, I am looking at this magical moment. And let's go back, <coughs> excuse me, um, to this spot uh, where number three, it says I accidentally missed a meal and we call this keto adapted. And if you've ever been to my support group or if you happen to um, watch one of the replay videos or somehow the, um, <laughs> when somebody is at group and we like to do check-ins, how's your week been? What was the high? What was the worst part? And we really don't encourage newbies to check in for at least three weeks. We want them to watch the process. But in the event that somebody in that first few weeks, and I like to think of few as under six, they say, you know, I accidentally missed a meal. I usually jump up from my chair and, and I'm like, yes, yes, that is it. That's the moment. And it, it, I get really excited because it is this, it's better than a blood test for me to know about your fat-based hormones. Uh, when, when I look at uh, you know, assessing somebody's endocrine uh, situation, I can put you into a study and they can do 15 to 20 blood checks a day. But when you look at hormones, especially uh, of our endocrine system, they're pulsatile. They go up and down, up and down. You need a really fancy machine, you need really good techs, and you need a lot of effort put into understanding what somebody's hormone-based um, you know, messages are coming from their body. So I'm an internist, I like to do labs, I'll check your labs and get, you know, kind of say, okay, I think this is what this, is what this means. But when it comes to measuring the endocrine or the, the hormone conversation that's going on in a patient, there's such an orchestra of, of hormones going on that become almost muted on a, on a low fat, high carbohydrate diet. Uh, it doesn't matter what the calories are. When you've got high insulin and you've been struggling with weight, you're gonna have inflammation and the hormones that I need to rise, the ones that nourish your brain, the ones that repair your heart, the ones that wake up your ovaries and testes and, um, you know, and give you satiety, they're all in the same orchestra together. So the day, when people enter the ketogenic diet, they, they, they hear people skipping meals and doing these, I did a 36 hour fast, I did a 72 hour, you know, they're kind of intimidated. And I will say, yeah, don't listen to that. What you need to care about is 20 carbohydrates or less, and I need you eating fat. And it's until that happens, and it happens in every patient. Uh, if they're insulin dependent, if they've had problems with chronic disease, and we just say, keep eating fat, keep eating fat, keep eating fat, and then this magical day happens, and they say, okay, I thought you all were crazy that you miss a meal, that sounds mental, but I did it. I totally accidentally missed a meal. I get goosebumps just thinking about this because it's such a powerful predictor that those fat-based hormones that I'm waiting for, I don't want you to do anything on this continuing except eat fat, keep the, the carbs low until this happens. And when I, let me go back to this so you can see what I'm talking about. So number three, so they, so on number one, they're eating carbs every two to four hours. Uh, that's how most people live their life. 
Uh, and I put it on the continuum because when people fall off the wagon, I had a few cookies this week during some high stress moments, uh, and I fell, but I did not fall back to one. But people do fall all the way back to one when they're not, when they don't have a support group, when they don't have some of the things that I'm going to teach about in the next six months. Um, so then they do the less than 20 carbs a day, but they have to have the fat. And that's what those guidelines of the next step say is do not be afraid of this. Put the fat in your coffee, put butter in your coffee, put cream, put coconut oil. I don't care how you get the fat in. Eat spoonfuls of uh, sour cream with, and use a pepperoni as your chip. I mean, I, I, I really don't care about anything except getting that fat high enough, finding foods that you love, until this magical moment on number three, which is they accidentally, they accidentally miss a meal. And now, instead of eating every six to eight hours, they're eating, you know, around eight to 12 hours apart. And it is, it is a glory, I have this big smile because this is just such a glorious moment for them uh, because it means the hormones that predict uh, how the next six months are gonna go are alive. And I've had some type one diabetics, some type two diabetics, some type two diabetics that inject insulin, that their inflammation is so high that um, we start them on the ketogenic uh, journey. Uh, we do have them checking urine ketones. That's one of the other things that I really do. I, I, ha I hear people on the channel and on the thing saying, oh, I need to get the blood meter before I start. I'm like, do not do that. You just need urine ketone strips. They're cheap, they're easy, they're safe. You don't have to figure out how to poke your finger. Uh, I want people to get there when, we, when they graduate, when they really do want to crack the code on their own metabolism, but it is not mandatory. Uh, it's not even what I recommend at the beginning. I want them eating high fat, looking at no calories. The only thing I want you counting is carbohydrates. And in the event that um, they've had really heavy need for an internist, like type two diabetic with insulin, with high blood pressure medicines, with cholesterol medicines, like those are the standard patients that I um, uh, have had, you know, enter the group. It can be six weeks before they get to the moment where they're like, I totally missed a meal. I totally missed a meal. And I am just so happy because what I have seen mistakes and it's, it's classic that it's my, my medical colleagues that do it the worst, is they'll cut the fat. They'll say, well, I just, I mean, we can get it from your fat cells. I'm like, you cannot get the fat from those fat cells until these hormones are high enough. Well, I'll just do a lab test. I'm like, I wouldn't put the money into looking into their labs because uh, it is, it's an endocrine test. An endocrine is a mobile, if you're in a research study, we still screw it up when we have all the advanced tools to look within a research study. Instead, I want you looking at the symptoms that happen when those hormones are high, which means they sleep better. Uh, there's several of these fat-based hormones, meaning you have to have fat around in excess to make them. So when they're eating, um, when they're eating high carb and high insulin, they'll never do it. And I don't tell them, I tell them the only thing I get really worried about is if you get hungry. Like I want you not getting hungry I want you having enough fat until you get to that one day where you said, I'm, I accidentally forgot to eat. If they're getting hungry every day, we are never going to get their hormones high enough for the transition over the next 10 steps to be graceful. They're gonna run into problems. They're gonna have a tough time. The resurrection of the brain and its function, it's, again, my favorite organ is the brain, is not going to happen. And those who push it, they, they get into the ketogenic world and they, they see everybody losing weight and they're like, how can you possibly lose weight when you have all this fat? And I'm like, don't look at it, don't look around, stay focused on you when you can feel that hormone uh, gets, when, when it's high, the symptom you're gonna feel is, I don't have hunger and I forgot to eat. Anyway, all right, so we've got, maybe just review my, my list here because this is what happens when I don't have a PowerPoint. Um, all right, so yeah, number one is they gotta read a book. Uh, number two is um, uh, they have to eat fat. Like you have to eat enough fat to get the shift of the hormones. Um, and when they skip that, I, I did not emphasize that nearly enough when, uh, when I was first doing this. And now I, yeah, you can see how excited I get about it. Uh, but number three is something I already kind of touched on and that is 
Uh, urine checks are mandatory. This diet is not, this way of living is not um, accidental. You are going to make ketones, and when your body is using and making ketones, they'll end up in your urine. Urine ketone strips are a must. You cannot skip that. I used to kind of just be gentle about saying, it'd be great if you check your urine ketones. I, no, you have got to check them. Uh, this chemistry, is, if I'm not getting urine ketones uh, in, in my patients, uh, I will, I mean, there's something wrong. So you have to be checking. Uh, keep in mind those urine ketone strips do have a little bit of a maintenance issue. You gotta put the cover back on tight. You wanna keep it out of the sunlight. I tell my patients to check first thing in the morning and then put three strips in their pocket. And without, uh, without fail, I want them at least using two of those the rest of the day. Um, but when you do not need to poke your finger, you don't need to tell anybody, you can just say, is it pink or is it white? And if it's pink, there's ketones and that's what we want. And if it's not pink, um, you're, there's something going on. And that's, I can't check you that often. There's not a test that I can say, over the last three months, what have your ketones been? Um, I need you checking urine ketones. All right, so that's number three. Number four is something that I wish I would have learned earlier. Um, I brought again my little sole, uh, spelled S-O-L-E, and the, <laughs> my, my foreign exchange student, <laughs> who's adorable, 18 years old, she's uh, a brave girl that asked to move in with a, a mom of three sons. Um, but she said, uh, she's been doing a paper on Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, um, uh, company, <laughs> which has no science behind it. But I said, you know, if I could have pushed replay on a couple things, I would have discovered these crystals. <laughs> That's where she says it sounds like Gwyneth Paltrow. I would have discovered salt crystals earlier. You put those salt crystals in water, and then uh, this is salty water up here. And you want to put it in a glass jar. That's really important. And it's pronounced sole, but it's, it's spelled S-O-L-E. And I uh, put a spoonful of this in my coffee in the morning now, and I've been doing that for about a month. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it would have been so much easier uh, had I done that from the start, like just, you don't ever need to buy those crystals again. One crystal will last you a lifetime. You put the water in, it's got enough antibacterial salt that it's not gonna give you a problem. Uh, but I, <laughs> I had no idea how much good salt enhances the flavor of my coffee. Like salted coffee sounded weird to me. I'm a huge coffee lover and cream was mandatory. So I was definitely had a tough time personally, backing away, <laughs> away from the phase where you put all that fat in your coffee. Uh, there is a time where you remove that. You'll find that out in the keto continuum when I get there. Uh, but had I added that salt, and the, to the folks that I've done this for, it's, it's so helpful. Um, you know, the, 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 I did an experiment at one of the, the support groups that I, uh, I think it was four weeks ago now. It was right after I got back from one of the speaking engagements and I'd had several of these packs where it gave you uh, a mineralized salt and personally I really liked the, the one from Utah. All of my kids were born in Utah. It's where my tr medical training was for residency. I love Utah, but I had no idea they had this good assault until a month ago. <laughs> so the, the package they have is I passed out the salt and I had them use the good salt on their tongue. And I wish I would have taken a picture because everybody's doing this and they open up the salt. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this because uh, I, I've, I've also learned when I, say, when I say put salt on your tongue, people are like, what do you mean? And I mean this, where you put salt in your, in your hand, uh, you can kind of see there, Ooh, there you go. And then you put your tongue on it. Yeah, yeah, it's salty. And you can see that my face is not making a, a grimace right now. No, it tastes good. So I did this with my support group. There's probably 20 people, I don't know, whatever there's in the room. Pass it around and I, I wish I would have taken a picture because everybody takes the salt and they're like, oh yeah, it's salt. And then we wait about three or four or five minutes. And <clears throat> actually waited about 10 minutes. And then I said, okay, now I want you to open up the white salt, the just sodium chloride, the perfectly clean, nothing else is in it. And <laughs> the, everybody's face was puckered, grimace, they, like kind of curly, like <laughs> it would have been the best commercial to say, this is why I care about salt. You should not make things taste that badly. Uh, this, uh, there is good salt out there. It matters. I did not emphasize this nearly enough. In the transition from my chronic inflamed patients, 
I talked about salt and I still am a huge proponent of magnesium, uh, Epsom salt baths, magnesium floats. The whole world is low on magnesium. That's one of my other warnings at the beginning is on day three, I would make them go for a magnesium float. If you don't know what that is, type the word float, magnesium, and spa, and then just look at the zip code closest to you. Uh, these are really impressive how much how many problems I can avoid in a patient if they follow my advice and just go for a float on week one and do that. There is a lot of problems with magnesium and replacing it in an inflamed patient is difficult. I could hook you up to an IV. I could replace it in IV, but that's not how this needs to go. Anyway, so salt, magnesium is on the list. So we've got the book, we've got fat, we've got urine checks, we've got salt, we've got magnesium. Uh, there are two more things left. One of them was the food guide I talked about earlier. Um, this was again something I, it was the first thing I ever produced. Currently it's the only thing that's on Amazon right now. So the, the products hopefully we should see returning back into stock in the next uh, three weeks. Um, I really appreciate your patience. I'm thankful for, thankful, thankful, thankful for the uh, loyalty. This setback has been yet another. <laughs> stress and distraction from writing my book, but we're getting there. Uh, however, the food guide was something I cared about. Um, let me show you what this is a little closer. So it's got a magnet on the back. Uh, it, I sell them in this set. Uh, again, the basic rules, really tiny amount uh, of, of reading, and then most of it is these charts of saying, when you look at food, I want you to start at good, and then I want you to go to better, and then I want you to go to best. Ah, see, there you go. Um, the, the point I'm making is it doesn't need to be that hard. You do not need to have uh, an encyclopedia of keto. I like that kind of reading, but you don't need to do that. This is the same information just put on a food guide um, and is um, to go on a, a refrigerator. So, and then I, I, when I was trying to figure this out, I'd never done this before, but I told the guys at the printing I wanted the products to not, I wanted them durable because you're gonna graduate from that. And then, this is where it gets fun, you should gift it to somebody else. You don't need it after you figure it out. Once it's in your brain that you're like, oh, here's some options for when I need fat. Here's the rules of how to think about booze. Here's, here's what we think about with vegetables and fruit. Uh, once you're done, you don't need it anymore. But because I made it so durable, it costs like 20, it's really expensive. So I think it's expensive anyway, $25 for the set. But what I like, and I tell people when I uh, send, them the inform send them the kit is, when you graduate, when you know this by heart, gift it to somebody else. Put the fridge guide at your church, at your school, at your work. Uh, because educating other people about the ketogenic diet, it's, it's kind of lonely when you are at first start. You think nobody else. Um, will will join you or will care. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't understand it, and that little guide is a perfect little, just you know, clip the points. Uh, once you've got the information, it's really only meant for beginners, but it's because beginners do a lot of things that I wish I would have done better. Uh, I really thought fiber and having more vegetables was going to be important. I I don't get hung up on that anymore. I really look at fat. My favorite vegetable is spinach, creamed spinach with sour cream, cream cheese, because it's mostly fat. <laughs> There's not a lot of fiber, but it's a really good way to deliver fat. Um, and that's not, uh, it's not a, a, a little problem. People have this mental shift, and especially when you're 20 years into writing prescriptions about lowering cholesterol and not, and not recommending fat. Um, all right, so we've got food guide. Uh, we've got two more things I recommend. Uh, the next thing I tell people on that I was kind of shy about saying this at first, uh, imagine me being shy, but I, I really, it's because it was so counterculture. I tell them, do not exercise for six weeks. You are hearing me. When you start the ketogenic diet, do not exercise for six weeks. Uh, if you're on an exercise program, you take it way down, way down, like, uh, Walking, um, but once or, once or twice a week, maybe if you are, that's if you're on an intense exercise program. But I do not want people exercising. They come on this diet and they want to lose weight, and I do not want them focusing on uh, anything except low carbs, high fat, and listening to their body's hormones. 
And I've done addiction recovery long enough that if you change too many things at the beginning of uh, a, a journey, uh, people do not uh, stick with it. It's too much, too quick. So I, I don't recommend exercise for six weeks. Um, even then, I exercise when they're ready. When you have enough energy that you want to burn it off, uh, it's much easier to start coaching you when you ask about it versus when I say, now you have to do that. Uh, I've done that for 20 years. I mean, I'll tell you, it's awful. Uh, when you turn into the scolding, here's what you need to do, guilt them into it, which I never did, but man, it's, it's rotten um, to have that kind of a um, relationship with your patient. I want you to feel good. And when you do, a walk is going to feel you're going to naturally want to do that. When your knees don't hurt because the inflammation is down, and it's not because I put you on a really good narcotic, it's because the inflammation is truly gone. And when those fat hormones are high enough, high enough for you to say, I accidentally forgot a meal, that is a newbie heading in the right direction. And they're going to walk, they're going to do their exercise. They're, they're human. They're going to want to be active. Uh, and when their brains are healthier and happier, when the inflammation is low, it, it doesn't take a lot of coaxing. They're, they're human. They want to be active. All right. So um, I think that's a wrap. I hope you got, uh, oh, no, no, no. Actually, the final one, the final thing that I would uh, tell patients about at the beginning of their ketogenic journey is that uh, you are stronger together. And again, that is really what this whole book that's coming out is about is how do I teach people to do what I do? Uh, for 20 years, I've been creating support groups within my medical clinic to help people through problems. Um, now, the only ones that insurance ever paid for were alcohol recovery or tobacco cessation recovery. They were all addiction-based, but I will be honest, we did lots of um, support groups that uh, were really about how do you, how, what, what does health look like? I wish I, the whole time I would have been teaching the ketogenic diet, but I wasn't. Um, and I've learned that when you're in a group of people trying to improve behavior, especially the low barrier to entrance, and that's what is going to be about this book. It does not need to have a high curriculum. You really just need to, you know, build it, they will come. The attraction of other people wanting to get healthier and then watching the transition of you getting healthier. Uh, you just can't believe what you can spark. Uh, you'll never understand a uh, problem better until you teach it. And you will never be more thankful for a support group until a week like I've had, which is filled with hospitals and Amazon <laughs> messages <laughs> that are not fun to read, uh, and um, cookies, you know, falling off when you have human reactions to stress. And then you put your hand out and you say, you know what, I need help too. I need a support group too. Uh, that's what it means to be human. And uh, in the relationships that happen in improving your health. They are authentic, they are honest, and I really think um, it's going to be a, a book that's well received by groups and other people across the country. We're going to improve healthcare way better than the politicians have ideas for, and it's going to be free, and it's going to be in your own little communities, and it's going to be led by people who listen to Dr. Boz. <laughs> that's my claim. <laughs> that's my, my, my hope. All right, so um, I am going to sign off. We are at the top of the hour. Um, once again, I'll review these, uh, um, re review what I'm asking the viewers to do if you haven't already. I love knowing where you're from, but this, today I really would like to know how long you've been on the ketogenic diet. And if you're in the first six weeks, or if you can remember life in the first six weeks, share some of the six week and less problems. I think I have a good list of them, but I, I'm depending on you. I would love to hear about where, uh, what does life look like at six weeks or less on the ketogenic diet? Where are the struggles coming from? So um, somebody asks, let me just do a couple things. Uh, somebody asks, where can I purchase uh, the, the keto, keto guide? If you go to bozmd.com, let's see, there you go, bozmd.com, and there's a little section there called Dr. Boz Favorites. If you click on there, uh, you'll find other things. People have asked, where can I buy other uh, uh, BHB salts, uh, the, the ketones in a can? Uh, there's a recommend there, a link there that you can click on. Um, there's some MCT oil there that you can click on. Let's see. Um, oh, the food guide's on there. <laughs> And I think the, the sucking salts or the crystals, <laughs> the Gwyneth Paltrow-ish crystals are on there. 
but you'll just see all of my my favorite things. I keep adding to there. Uh, there's a uh, another app I'm going to talk about next week uh, that I thought I would have ready this week, but I just need a little more time to study it. It's just it's something I learned about at the my favorite conference of the year. So um, I just I mean, it's really exciting. I like it. Um, in other news. Um, I will, yeah, I will continue to watch uh, the messages within YouTube first, so message away. <laughs> I will do my best to keep up. Uh, oh, wait, I was going to check my sugar at the end. Hold on. All right, so, yeah, it's been too long since this tradition um, has happened. So, again, I have two of the same monitors. I don't want you to think that they are different. They are the exact same ones, but in the spirit of trying to do this as quickly as possible, uh, I actually, whenever I go to one of my uh, lectures that I speak at, um, I had a patient make me this <laughs> super cute Dr. Boz, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, this Dr. Boz bag, and it's specifically <laughs> for my for my fork care and my meter and my clicker because when I would go to the conferences, <laughs> I would have just a ton of people asking, can you check my Dr. Boss ratio? I'm like, oh, that's a great way to, that's a great beginning. So there's your, the ketone, that takes 10 seconds to, to measure. And this is the uh, uh, glucose. So the glucose strip is white, the ketone one is, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I burned some of those ketones. Uh, so it went from 0.9 to 0.7. I was not drinking ketones tonight, I was drinking just uh, peak tea. And I can't remember what my glucose was at the beginning of this, but. Um, it does take brain power and stress, which is related to needing some fuel. So I just think it's fun to watch what do your fuels do when you're out there in the day. And if someday there's going to be a continuous glucose and ketone monitor out there, but apparently that's really hard to do. And so every person I've pitched that idea to, they say that's not possible. So until then, I will see you next week. We are the Dr. Boz channel, improving your health one ketone at a time. Thanks, everybody. See you next week.